Hey guys, it's Chris at Highline Guitars, and you're watching another episode of From the Luthier's Workbench. If you like to build or repair guitars, I suggest you click that subscribe button down below, and you'll become part of a community of fellow luthiers, and together, we can take your skills to a whole new level. In this episode, I'm going to be covering part four of the Echo Laminated Top Guitar Build. And what I'm going to talk about specifically is how and why I organize my G-code files on my computer and then send them to the CNC machine because I have a very specific and deliberate process here. So let me bring you in onto the computer and I'll show you how this all works. Now when it comes to CNC technology, you really have two different parts. You have the front end and the back end. The front end is where you do all your design work on your computer, where you establish tool paths and write the G-code. And then on the back end is the actual process of carving those parts on the CNC machine. Now I've talked about this approach quite a bit before in the past, but let me show you where it starts. I begin by using a CAM program or a CAD program called Rhinoceros 3D for the Macintosh. And that's where I design all of my 3D models for the body, the neck, and the fretboard, just like you see here. Then I export that file out and bring it into a program. This is a CAM program called MeshCam. And this is where I can assign the tool paths and write the G code that I'll use for carving. Once all this work is done, I will end up with a bunch of different G-code files because when it comes to cutting a guitar, you have numerous operations. You have operations on the uh, back of the guitar as well as the front of the guitar, the perimeter, and the same is true with the fretboard and the neck. You've got multiple different G-code operations that need to be done. So I'll have all these G-code files on my computer and what I need to do is send those one at a time to the CNC machine as I'm carving the part and I want to do it in a specific order to make sure that I don't run into problems down the road as I mentioned earlier. So what I do is I use this is easel from Inventables and this is an online G-code sending program. It's also a design program. You can actually design some of your files in Easel that you'll use to cut. And um, I use it for that as well as uh, I can import my G-code files that I created in MeshCam into this program. And then from here, I can send this directly to my CNC machine to cut those different parts out. And what you're seeing on the screen right now is the file for the slot for the nut and the markers for my fretboard. And that is the very first file that I'm going to cut on my CNC machine. My process is pretty straightforward and simple in terms of the order that I do things. I always make my fretboard first and I make it all the way to completion. Then I make the neck shaft itself, which includes the back contour and the heel and all that, the headstock. And I do that as one complete operation. Once that's done, I can install the truss rod into the neck and then glue the fretboard down. And the reason I do it this way, and I've, I've talked about this before, is because if I run into a problem, you know, let's say uh, the wood that I'm using ends up having a flaw somewhere hidden inside of it, or, you know, I make a mistake with the G-code, I've only lost that one part. I haven't lost an entire neck and fretboard together. I know a lot of guys like to glue their uh, fretboard down to the neck blank before they do any carving, but I've found that even though it isn't likely going to happen, there's always going to be that that one occasion where you slip with a draw knife or or your spoke shave or whatever tool you're using to make the neck and you'll goof up the neck and that means you've lost both the neck and the fretboard at the same time. So doing them separately allows me to ensure that if I make a mistake on one, I haven't lost both. But once I've finished carving 
the, uh, the, the slot for the nut as well as the marker dots, the next file, and as you, if you look at the bottom of the screen, you'll see all these pages are set up, and these are each different cutting operation. So the second one is to cut the slots for my frets. Now I actually created this file in Adobe Illustrator and saved it as an SVG and then imported it directly into Easel and I can use the lines that you see here to um, establish where I need to cut the slots for each of the frets. And the way I do my frets is I like to cut the slots so they stop just short of the edge of the fretboard, about uh, 3 30 seconds of an inch. That way the sides of the fretboard are nice and smooth and there's no chance for fret sprout later on when humidity levels change. But then once I have those slots cut into the uh, fretboard blank, I can then proceed with cutting the radius as well as the perimeter shape of the fretboard. And when I've completed that operation, the fretboard is done. It's finished and I can set it aside. Then I'll attach my uh, uh, neck blank to the CNC machine and I'll begin the process of cutting the cutting operations for the neck. And that starts out with a truss rod slot like you see here. And I know this doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but this is going to be the slot cut into the center of the blank for the neck. And once it's cut, I can then proceed with cutting the angled headstock shape. And this is the front of the headstock shape. And it's going to basically carve away all the excess wood and then bring it down to that nice angle along with the perimeter shape. I've had several viewers ask me if I have a Patreon account where they can send money to show support for my YouTube channel. I don't. However, what I do have is a website where you can purchase plans for electric guitars as well as many of the tools that I use to make guitars. It's called eGuitarPlans.com and I'll put a link down in the description below. Think of it as a way to show me support while getting something in return. Now let's get back to the video. When that's done, I'm basically done with the entire top or, or front of the uh, neck blank. So I can then flip it over and I'll start by carving the back of the headstock. And that's what's happening with this file here is it's just going to cut the back angle and then it will cut the entire contour all the way through to the front. When that's done, I can then move on to carving the back contour as well as the heel shape of the neck, which is what you see here. And this is probably the longest portion of the carve for the neck. This will probably take, um, I would say, about an hour and a half, maybe hour and 45 minutes to cut out this entire shape. But when you consider how long it takes to carve a neck and then get it nice and smooth, the old... Uh, um, spoke shave draw knife method, which I've done in the past, this is definitely much faster and more efficient. Now, once I've finished this, the neck is done. I can then install the truss rod and glue the fretboard on. And all I need to do is some light sanding before applying uh, whatever finish I intend to use on it. Now, for the body, I start by uh, attaching the blank to the back with the back side up. Uh, so it's upside down on the um, CNC machine, and I will carve the different relief carving cutouts on the back side of the body. And this is a, about a 20-minute operation. And once it's done, the surface is smooth enough to be sanded with 220 grit. So it's it's pretty efficient way to do this. And then I will cut the control cavity and this consists of the depth of the uh, cavity itself as well as a recessed shelf for the cover to sit on. And then once this is done I will then flip over the body to carve the other side. And if you look closely you'll see these red lines and what those red lines do is they indicate rapid movements of the router. So it starts here and from here, it moves over and does the carves. Well, 
in order to register everything I did on the back with everything I'm going to do on the front, I always make sure that my home position is in the exact center of the blank. And I mark the actual exact center of the blank. So that way, every time I need to flip it over, I can move the router right to that point and start from there to cut the uh, operations on that side. And I always know that my uh, each side is going to be registered. So that's how I do that. I, I get questions about that all the time, and I know it seems like it's kind of hard to understand and kind of and that's one of the problems with talking about CNC technology. The actual processes themselves are not that difficult. They're pretty easy to do, but they're really hard to explain. Okay, so once I've finished with the control cavity, I'll flip the body over, and this is the carving operation for the pickup pockets, the neck pockets. The, uh, this is going to have a beveled edge, so that will be included. Uh, drilling holes for the controls like the switch and the pots, and then the entire outer perimeter shape. And once that's done, the body can then be removed from the blank and it's ready for just final sanding. Then I can install the neck and proceed with applying finish. And the very last file that I have, and this is one that often gets forgotten, is the control cavity cover which I have here, and once that's usually, usually going to be cut out of a about an eighth of an inch thick piece of uh, whatever hardwood I want to use for this. Probably in this case I'll use maple. So that's the basic workflow that I use, and um, Easel is a fantastic program for doing this because you can not only design in it, you can also send your G-code file to your Arduino-based CNC machine, and that's primarily what it works with. And I started using this program when I was using the uh, Inventables X-Carve CNC machine, and I just love the program. I think it works really well, and I have no issues with it. So, you know, if you're thinking about getting into CNC, I would definitely recommend you check out the Inventables X-Carve. It worked great for me. And I often get uh, questions from folks asking me, why did I switch from the X-Carve to my own home-built machine? Well, after several years of using the X-Carve, I had become so fascinated just with the CNC machine technology itself that I really wanted to take a shot at designing and building my own. And that sort of became my own little hobby project on the side. And that's the machine I currently use. But I will still recommend the X-Carve mainly because of the support you get from Inventables as well as their online forum community. So, Well, that's all the time I have for this episode. In the next one, I hope to actually start carving some of this guitar on the CNC machine using these G-code files that I just showed you. Until then, if you enjoy videos like this, be sure to click that subscribe button. And if you want to show some support for what I do on this YouTube channel, and want to get something in return, head over to eGuitarPlans.com and consider purchasing a set of plans for a guitar or one of the tools that I use, including the CNC machine that I'm going to show you in operation in the next episode. So until then, take care, and I'll see you soon.